Hey, good evening, everyone. I'm Bruce King. I'm uh, one of the co-directors of Maine Inside Out, and thank you all for coming. Um, I'd like to extend a special thanks for the invite from the Tug Collective to MPAC and all involved with the Freedom and Captivity Project. It's been an amazing year plus of programming um, to introduce to Maine what prison abolition can really look like. Maine Inside Out comes from our work, at our work, from a really multifaceted approach. We're so fortunate to be among policymakers, system reformers, advocates, academics, people with lived experience, and even clinical professionals who are calling for a great change in approaching how we address harms and accountability. However, we are also among the artists who are speaking their truths calling for a world where the response to trauma is not more trauma, but rather healing and creating belonging and transformative relationships. Even with all of that, we are your peers. We are you. We invite the public to be a part of this change as peers and into this discussion, not as passive observers, but as participants in the dialogue and create an alternative through opening the hearts and minds. At MIO, our stated mission is to create a world where everyone matters and belongs. And it is our deep desire that you join with us in the creation of this world. So we're gonna have our members come up here and introduce you to the main Inside Out experience in just a moment. Yeah, first of all, I wanna thank everybody. Um, for being here and welcoming us here for our production tonight of We Do This For Them. Um, we're gonna start this night off by um, showing um, a little short film called Exposed, and then we'll get this program started. Can you cue it up for us tech people? This is my first experience being out of incarceration with Man Set Out. So I'm excited to see where this will take me. gave everybody a piece of paper. They're gonna write down the number one issue that has been bothering them this year. And we're gonna see, and we're gonna write that down and jot it all down on the notes first. And that'll be like, we can, you're gonna use that as an outline into the performance. Yeah, see it. All right, um, profiling. profiling. Profiling? Law enforcement. Thinking about what people are doing on the outs while I was in. A single parent living in poverty. What did you say, violence? Yeah. And I said, there's a guy with a gun, like a real gun. He goes, yes, he's shooting at people. And I, I, all of a sudden, I just see this guy go, pow. You know, I'm like, wow. I hid, right, I, hid a, I hid in a bush. I didn't come out for like an, almost an hour. You know, just to see ambulance and stuff, and they were picking them up. Turned out later on, they were friends of mine. and Yeah, they didn't make it. All right, this isn't really a big deal to a lot of people, but it's just a big deal to me. Family grudges and arguments. Um, <laughs> mental illness is my biggest issue. My problem would be housing. My friends were in the same situation. They were just as homeless as I was, so like, didn't really work out that way. So one night, there was nowhere for me to go. Came here. Saw this nice rock. It's comfy, it's comfy, you know. It's firm. It is. It's small back then. It's good for your back. <laughs> to feel to feel left behind, you know, like you're stuck in prerogatory and you're just invisible to everybody. 
I think that's I think that's been the biggest issue. My biggest problem was seeing people not know how to live once they get out of the system and not knowing how to keep up with the times because they've been in for so long. I just got out yesterday and the minute I got out, I hit up Kiara and she's the one that just brought me here. Made sure I was involved because she knew all the stuff that I'd just been through in the past. Struggle getting back into the community. Just now when I was in there with all those people, I could just feel like my heart racing and like I didn't know if I was standing right, I didn't know what was going on. Because <laughs> I'm not used to being around all those people. Don't mind these young <laughs> Children that grow up in this com community, that 50% of the people are going to jail. So it's not, it's not nature, it's actually how, what's around them. What's, are they being targeted? What's the resources they have? Walk to the middle if you or someone in your immediate family struggles with a mental illness of some sort. Last night, Made Inside Out Lewiston and, and everybody else who showed up were really powerful to let the system know that it is not working and you all have the answers and the answers are rooted in each of your communities. Of somebody of their stature, you know, listening to us and hearing what we have to say. That blew my mind. What are your suggestions for making changes in the system? If you think something should be different, we want you to tell us what they are. Who would like to get the ball rolling? Um, I'm Matthew. Um, when I was 12 years old, I was detained in Long Creek Youth Development Center for the first time, you know. 12 years old, you're going into a what most of us refer to as a youth prison. 95% of our population in Long Creek had mental health issues in one way or another. You know, like me, I have ADHD, I have anger issues, I've been diagnosed bipolar, I've, I've been diagnosed with, you name it, I've probably been diagnosed with it. We wanna go out there and we wanna prevent this. We wanna provide them with the support they need early on, so later in their life, 10, 15, 20 years down the road, they still have these skills and they stay out of the system and they can develop their life and pass these skills down to the other youth. It was really good seeing Matt stand up and talk. You know, he did really well, it surprised me because you know, always so quiet and it was really, really well spoken and it's like proud moments over there. That speech, dude. You killed it, man, and I'm really impressed about it. You know, and I'm proud of everybody for, you know, sharing yesterday and. Uh, but right up. Were you, were you in the news or something? Yeah, I was. I got put in the Sun Journal. I'm not familiar with all these terms. My first time for being in the Sun Journal for actually something that I'm proud of. Hi, I'm Paige. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Randy. <clears throat> I grew up in poverty. My uh, mother was pregnant at 15. Uh, 17, 19, and 21. Uh, she dropped out in eighth grade. Um, my dad uh, got his GED <clears throat> at Thomaston State Prison. People are incarcerated in Maine. Very high instances of mental health, substance abuse, poverty, neglect, trauma, all those combinations. And so I think it's uh, my duty as the Chief Corrections Officer in the, in the state of Maine to change the way we do business, and, and that's why I'm here. Well, it feels like I made it a long way. It feels like I came I came a far way to do this. <laughs> Just to get the chance to talk to somebody that has control of it. Of control of what happened to me and what happened to others. It just feels great. We got a lot of people thinking, a lot of very powerful people thinking. Our losses are the ones that make us stronger and that's what why we fight together every day to do this work because like we've all had loss and we all have pain, but at least we have each other to get through it. So why am I here? Is it because I'm a bad kid, or is there more to the story? Could my folks in my community have done something to help me? Most of us came from a broken home. All of us have problems. All of us need help. The majority of us did not receive it. Youth incarceration actually harms youth, does not help them. Before we go out and start a new play, you know, we take our losses. We have lost quite a few this past year, actually. You try laying in a cold cell, 
can't even close my eyes to pray. Trust gone, anger fills my veins every night as I lay. Lost count of the sleepless nights, not knowing if they're okay. Broken record repeated, as if you expected it to play. Charge criminal, skip. Let my mother go, skip, skip. Let my father go, skip. Charge criminal, skip. The red and blue lights don't know. One verse to Department of Corrections. Let my family go, let my family go, let my family go. And I'm here, one, today to celebrate the life and death of Rune. And um, I mean, two, because incarcerating anybody, locking anybody in a cage just doesn't work. It doesn't matter how you look at it. It's, it's non-beneficial. Um, and that's what we're fighting against. Because um, amongst this crazy world, apparently there's only a select few that understand cages don't work for humans. That's all I got. It's been a long year, and uh... It's just that wave again, like I've been saying, and it's just, I don't know, I'm struck in by a lot of things. And to be honest, it's like a numbing feeling over time, you know? And that's without him trying, a personality that's satisfying while the gates of struggles were horrifying. Accomplishments that were mesmerizing, this must be a human bison. A loving father from pain, a loving son from the same. Our young community um, is the future to our universe. The young community is what's going to keep the human race going. We in there. We in there. Everybody. In there, like swimming. We missing some hands. Y'all know that, right? I see. I see. I see. Missing color. A lot of missing color hands. One, two, three. Missing color. Thank you. And now I'd like to um, introduce our host for the evening. Our host for the evening is um, Tyler Jackson. Tyler Jackson has been with Manny Side Out for a little while, performing in plays. Now he's a part-time staff. And Daryl Shepard, Daryl Shepard from the Biddeford community, they're going to be our host for this evening. And yeah, give him a warm welcome, please. Thank you guys very much for having us. Excuse me. Very happy to be here. Uh, can't say I wasn't nervous. It's been a long time since we've been live in front of an audience. So, uh, you know, I'm really proud to be able to present these people. Daryl. Hey, y'all. I am, it is the privilege of my life to introduce these powerful artists and our powerful family to you and our cause to bring together a world where everybody matters and everybody belongs and that, yes, that even means you. That every point of view can be expressed and everybody can be seen and everybody can be heard. And uh, recently we've been doing a lot of things. We've been in a pandemic whole pandemic and we and I really admire the grit of our members because while the pandemic were going on every week every week we were on zoom meetings creating thinking asking questions about what was going on asking questions about what was going on with each other seeing about each other taking care of each other being in community with one another and we want to be in community with everyone just like we are in community with each other right now so now, we are going to bring with you our poem for our site in Lewiston, our new base of operations to where we are going to bring the world where everybody matters and belongs, first to Maine and then to America and then to the world. For this, we have our poem for Lewiston. I just want to say thank you everyone for coming out. Um, imagine open doors and open floors that bring us together. 
imagine helping build an already strong community stronger. Imagine to create a new way of being in a, new, in a community with one another. Imagine free thought and free speech. Imagine creating plays, sculptures that show the way to a uh, strong community and for better days, better days, better days. Hey. Imagine a safe place where all people can come to when in need. Imagine a community without chains of a past and a view of free range. Imagine a place where we can all connect and enjoy life. Imagine the listing or first sight. A vision we share together with open arms. We welcome each other to be their own identity with comfort and not humility. We mark our territory in the Lewiston community. Our new space is open to all Main Inside Out family. Our new space is open to all Main Inside Out family. All right, for our next artist we have up there is, this lady is our mama. Like, she's not much older than me, but she has been like a mother, a sister, like, uh, like one of our major matriarchs in uh, MIO. She is taking care of us. She's the director of our uh, advocacy and support. So it is her little work to take care of, uh, be a mother to all of MIO, and we appreciate it so much. Please give a round of applause or a round of snaps and claps for Miss Stacy Peretz. This poem I wrote is called A Year in Your World. Are you, can y'all hear me okay? Feeling as though the weight of the world is on your shoulders. Reaching out, but feeling like nobody's in your corner. Darkness sets in and your mind starts to wander. How am I gonna eat? Where am I gonna sleep? My baby got no diapers and no shoes on her feet. I'm hungry, three days I've gone to sleep with no food to eat. I'm trying to live right, but I belong to the streets. Cold and alone, no friends, no family, no place to call home. Damn, really starting to feel this defeat. PTSD every day of the week. Sleepless nights, endless tears cried, hearing my belly's every hungry cry. cry. Now reports have been made, the man's coming my, my way. I can't let them take my babies. CPS is on the way. Please help me, they're taking them away. I swear I'm doing my best. Every day I hit the ground running, no time for rest. No one to turn to, husband's deceased, friends are dying in the streets. Allah, please send me some peace. A friend in whom I know I can depend, someone to walk me through this shit because I'm at my rope's end. During the day I make plays through MIO for social change, but by night I'm back to being alone again. I know MIO cares. It shows in the way they're trying to help me get there. Having them here, I feel no fear. Thank you, Lord, I see you do answer prayer. I walk in that space and it's like I can feel the light shining on my face again. New friends, great food, a family that blends. Exposing systemic oppression, racism, equality. Man, I can't wait to do it all again. Check-ins, home visits, court dates, letters to the judge. Inside visits, appointments, hospital visits, transport from a whole other state. Late nights on the phone to prevent another death date. Wiping of tears from a young parent's face before the system de decides on their child's fate. Transporting young folks to testify before state. Creating a way for, all, for many to lay down the hate. This list goes on and on because we're still not straight. 
Staff become family and friends, uplifting my spirits and lending a hand. How can we help? Their kindness never ends. Who can we reach out to, trying to turn enemies into friends? Turning foe into allies for possibilities, there's no end. Creating a space where you no longer have to pretend. You begin to see your old strengths and gain some new ones along the way. Here's where you start to begin to try and start life over again. Alone, you stand in that courtroom again. Only this time you've grown, you've found your strength again. You've learned new coping skills, even found a new home. New job you start that next weekend, only now you no longer worry because MIO walked you through resources and you now know this community. Baby now got diapers and new shoes on her feet. You hear people say we play too much. Now nah, MIO caught this wave and we're riding it out for social change on the right beat. We out here doing big things no one else has ever seen. We go from being inside looking out to outside looking in. Now we're heard and we're seen. No, we're not a fix all, but damn, isn't this a great place to begin? If people only knew all it takes is a friend, a safe space, great food, new friends, a lot of time and effort, and yes, lots of fundraising. But to live in a stronger, healthier, healthier community, wouldn't it all be worth it in the end? Thank you. Okay, so this next person who I'm gonna bring up has been a real inspiration to me when it comes to fatherhood and to uh, just be able to speak louder than people really care to listen because you really gotta push that point across. Peter, come give it to him. But sometimes, I really don't feel it beating. Numb by pain, know the pain. Partially metaphorically speaking. And partially from the people I love to care for who come and go like the leaf playing in the wind as they toss aside unity and loyalty and replace them for personal gains and wins. See, I'm the type who's always wondering and asking myself, what can I do to try to help the next? But sometimes, the world be feeling really vexed, so they take it as disrespect and then try to hang with me. By my neck. But thankfully, my mama, she raised me to be humble and to find different paths to help the people that are feeling like their life is so complex. But little do they know, I feel bad. So once I start seeing the red flag signs and they think about double crossing that white straight line, I won't hesitate to put someone in check. But for those who are mold out of ignorance and cold, take this time to process what I said and reflect. Just because I was born from a different descent and was raised in an inner city projects and I got tattoos and different logics, doesn't mean I can't or won't speak without intellect. So visualize and see a little bit of my reality. So see my pain is in a dark hole that will swallow your heart up and more of a pump to a little shot that will blow your heart up. Inside, turn it over, brown, looking up, buddy, and charred up. But that's the thing about pain. It has no remorse, so it's quick to pull your guard card out. But I self taught myself self control so I can manhandle and analyze all situations. And see, what I learned to it all is to be patient and have anticipation. So while I'm walking and balancing on the thin lines of rules and regulations, I'm hitting the gaps like running backs, capitalizing opportunities, creating small spaces. So I'm a man of many faces, but being fake ain't one of them. I'm a man of many traits, but degrading people is none of them. I'm a young man that thrives off knowledge. So for the next generation, I'm a Miyagi again with some dumb. And tell them that they're going to go and hurt. My lessons and teachings are never done. But now, I'm not saying that I'm like or innocent or perfect. But I will go out fighting the sins of the world and my sins with a purpose. My weapon of choice is my words infused with deep emotions. So what y'all? Bury deep down under the ground. Rise up to the surface because your body's in temple. So rid yourself of the negativities and the self-inflicted curses. Because a beautiful soul is never worthless. 
So say what you mean and mean what you say and live it day by day, I promise you. Your life and the walk that you have in your life has its purpose. And we do this for them. Thank you. Incredible. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Stacy. That, that was that was beautiful. Thank you. And we have more to come. And actually, next we have up one of our brightest lights in MIO. Um, partially because he has lived a life of somewhat of extremes of experience. And he brings such a powerful voice to what we have being in the system and and also being in a higher position than, than some of us. He is, his artwork is explosive. And I'm so proud to introduce him. Mr. JP, please come up here and show him. I don't think I'm gonna need this thing. We'll try anyway. I said, broken hearts, forgotten souls. How can we live in a world that's so cold? Fucking people screw our lives, the nightmares that haunt our dreams at night. Make it hard to see the truth. When questions are asked, there is no proof. How can we live in a world that's so cold? Ask my little brother Bryson. That's where the story's told. Fucking man came into my life, called me son, held me close at night, stole my heart and my soul, then raped me in my own home. Love is so hard to decipher these days. Are they their children or just their slaves? I've heard these all before, but every time I hear it, it just still takes my breath away. Wow. So this next person, I'm really proud to present because, you know, it's not very often people come out of their shell and they, you know, write amazing pieces of artwork. This man wrote something this year that, like, literally stole our hearts. Wayne. AKA OG McFly. What does it feel like to support somebody who isn't ready to accept help? It feels like there's a weight on your shoulders that no matter how hard you try, you just can't shake free. It's like you're being tossed and turned throughout the sea like a ship in the ocean with no direction in which to go to find land. It's like a journey through trials and tribulations. <clears throat> like a lion in the jungle that has starved for a week, trying to chase a gazelle is just too far out of his reach. You see, you can't quite get through to somebody if they're not ready to pick up the phone. But come the end of the day, all you can do is let them know they're not alone. You see, if I could do one thing different, I would show more love, compassion, and understanding. But it's hard to show understanding when you're clueless as to the circumstances. Like, it gets deep around here. Like, there's some powerful stuff. And like uh, my co-host said, like, it's not usual we get much, much out of them. But when it is, it's some powerful stuff. So the next person we have coming to the stage is a gentleman who has been system impacted and he has used the power of his pain to create some powerful poems, powerful raps, some, and give some powerful performances when we, are, uh, when we uh, do theater inside. Mr. Momo, please come to the stage and show out on the foot. Yeah. I'm so hurt by the criminal justice system. They were supposed to protect us from violence, but instead they did me wrong. They put a gun to my face, told me to get out of the vehicle, accused me of having a weapon. Sometimes I don't feel safe to drive because of what I've been through. This needs to change. I thought cops were here to protect us, not to go against us.
Thank you, Momo. I appreciate that. So, I've done, uh, I'm a music producer, uh, okay? So, this next artist and I have worked together multiple times, and you know, sometimes we don't always finish, because it's too good to finish. Nobody needs to hear it except for us. So this next person, I'm really excited because he's, he's you know, he's an amazing artist. And, uh, you know, he got gold all the time. Dom, Mr. Leo Money, everybody. Money. Yeah. The heat that I'm whipping ain't never creep the kitchen. I spit bars to the meat of slipping. Don't sleep on the competition, cause I'm two feet deep in the odds of winning. Yeah, the heat that I'm whipping ain't ever creeped your kitchen. I spit bars to the meat is flipping. Don't sleep on the competition, cause I'm two feet deep in the odds of winning. Yeah, my mental thoughts got my pencil caught with a special job. I'ma level the field and show you who's the boss. The only man I fear is the man on the cross. I came too far just to take another loss. God's given me a chance, prove everyone wrong. I'm coming in this rap game full head on. So boy, watch how you're stepping, cause I'm on the quiet kid method. Brain full of depression, I was 18, contemplating prison. Six years of my life, I ain't tripping. Had to make in a peace with my demons. Praise my father above, cause I'm breathing. Jump up, boys, yeah, I see them praying for VVS and water drip. Best top 10 artist picks. I pour my heart out in the shit. So y'all see me at top, well, you know I died and I didn't stop. I pray the cops don't find my brothers on the block. Swinging white rocks and the day ones don't get locked. Yeah, free map. The heat that I'm whipping ain't never creeped your kitchen. I spit bars to the meat is flipping. Don't sleep on the competition, cause I'm two feet deep in the odds of winning. Yeah. Electrifying, one of the most electrified performers we got up here in my oh, Mr. Leo Money. I mean, uh, Dom, uh, Dom. Yeah, uh, all right. Um, next we have one of the biggest hearts we got in MIO. And being one of the biggest hearts we got in MIO, he's probably experienced a lot. He is uh, because he's experienced a lot of pain. Uh, he's experienced loss, and he's been system impacted, and it's only made his heart stronger. It's only made it more powerful. It's only made him more loving and more kind. He, in fact, he uh, when I first came to MIO as a newcomer, he was one of the first person to ever show me like a, a lot of comments and made me feel like I belong. And I just want to appreciate him right now, Mr. Anthony. Tony, give it to him right now. Thank you, thank you. So just a little bit of background on this piece. Um, last year, my brother committed suicide and I had to call the cops the day before because he said he took all his medication. When the cop got there, after a few minutes, the cop told him, if you're gonna kill yourself, kill yourself. If you're gonna get in my cop car, get in my cop car. If you're gonna go in the ambulance, go in the ambulance. But whatever you do, he said, do it quick. Oh, dude, it hurt. The next day, the unthinkable happened. So I do this for him, we do this for them. Let's make a change. <sighs> Recovery is just a single step taken by anybody if the mindset is growth. Recovery is you and it's me sitting down talking about what was, what can be, and how we can make it there. 
Recovery is a conversation with a man who's been tied down by the weight of a world that he didn't need to carry. He carried it for you and me, simply so we didn't have to. It's looking into the eyes of a brother who held so much secrets, but had the biggest heart of anyone I knew. Recovery was the laugh he got everyone to make even when it was raining and dark outside. So take a look around. If my brother, who is the umbrella for a person or two in a storm, can we be that umbrella? Can we give that umbrella to someone else? Recovery is us. It's every day, it's everywhere. We have to pick it up. We have to share it with other people. Recovery is you and me and it's everybody. Recovery is Scott. Rawson Elfords, I love you. Wow. Dude. I'm proud of you, man. So, this next person that I want to bring up, he's been with us for a very long time. Uh, goes way back. Uh, he is the MVP of Main Inside Out. I'm proud to call him my cousin. Mr. Mike Pru. Hey. Take it away, my cousin. Get your applause. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to say I knew Anthony's brother very well. Really, really nice kid. Very sad to see him go. I will also put my honors to him all day. Um, I wrote this piece. I didn't think I was gonna find it. It's literally the very first piece I ever writ, written in my entire life. 15 years old, sitting in a two and a half year sentence in Long Creek. The fact that I stumbled across it is like perfect timing. I've only shared it with one person in MIO so far to this day, and he just saw it earlier today. So I got his permit. I got his A-OK -okay on it, so I'm going to give it a shot. Through my eyes, the chains are still seeable. How I managed to stay alive is simply unbelievable. The mental damage I have witnessed and have been given is untreatable. Still, I see the scars that the system left in my skin. 13 years old, not knowing how the sound of an alarm, alarms, keys, and a slamming door is when, the seer, is when my fear sets in not ever knowing that the simple mistakes will never be forgiven. Sentences to be, retra uh, yeah, sentence to be retrained in the eyes of those who could care less once I'm on the outside, only to be happy enough to make a paycheck once I'm back on the inside. See, you leave without any lessons ever being taught. No matter what you achieve there, you become nothing more than an afterthought. You're set up to fail and return as quick as you're released, only to, be, uh, only to mess up and being given another time frame, uh, yeah, only to mess up and be given another time frame of no peace. We're only kids in here, but that don't mean anything to them. Only thing, only thing we got going for us is the, is for our time to end. Help us. I do this for them. I speak up for them. My pleasure to introduce our next performer, which is one of our newer performers tonight. I think this is one of his first times performing us live outside, and I want y'all to give him so much love. Mr. Mike Green, please come to the stage. Yeah, I definitely got to tell y'all this is my first performance, and it took a lot to get up here, so. That I'm sorry though my words just couldn't fix it And I hope that we can both have some, some fun just reminiscing About the times that we done been through All the times I didn't listen All the changes that I made and all the changes that you did All the risk I had to take just doing shit I had no business And I got a couple fans but know you'll always be my biggest And my vision got so blurry you was there to paint my image You just gotta know your limits Now go and do your business 
remember me young and age. age. I would, I would sleep, sleep in your bed, bed like every day. day. Even, Even though my room was just two steps, steps away. Cause I knew that when them demons, demons called me, you would keep me safe. And I'm thankful for all that pain I brought you. You was there to stay. Yeah, you treat me like that golden child. I was rolling wild, smoking loud. Me and Joey riding, probably toting pounds. But my name be popping like that top up off that shoulder now. And I'm trying to carry on my posse on my shoulders now. Yeah. Gonna bring it back a couple lines. Hey yo, I love you, man. Just let me back up a few lines. Okay. Hey yo, love. I remember I young remember age. Your age. I, I would sleep up in your bed like every day, even though my room was just some steps away. Cause, Cause I knew that when them demons call me, you would keep me safe. And, and I knew that all the pain I brought to you was there to stay. Yeah, you treat me like that golden child. I was, I was rolling wild, wild smoking, smoking loud. Me and Joey riding, probably talking pounds. But my name be popping like that top up off that shoulder now. And, and I'm, I'm trying to carry on my posse on my shoulders now. Went, Went from being sporty straight to toting on that 40 cal. Killing like a disappointment. Trying to make you more than proud. Rather put my heart up in the song than I'm recording now. Tell you that I love you and I'm sorry. And it's for you now. Yeah. I love you, man. Sorry, I've had a lot of shit going on. I love that beat. That beat is awesome. Uh, so this next one, I'm glad to call him a good friend of mine, Mr. Don Kell, DK. Always got some deep, deep stuff. I'm proud to introduce him real quick. My poem's named How I Feel In My Skin. How I Feel In My Skin. I feel like a ticking time bomb. White notions that I'm violent because of the color of my skin. I'm labeled as a criminal before a human just because of a corrupted system that wants to keep people of color slaves, both mentally and physically, because they would rather see us as inhuman to justify their means hidden in the background, to continue having control of people of color, to push their propaganda. They flood our neighborhoods with liquor stores, gun stores, promotion of tobacco use to minors, they take our fathers away and put them in cages for double the time of those of white skin. It's all there in front of our faces. We can do something if we choose to see it, because I know we are resilient, and we always take the scraps of the world and turn it to a million bucks, because we have the power to, and the numbers to, put this corrupted system where it needs to be, in the trash. And we're going to do what we do best, take something of no value and turn it into something priceless, because we will be seen, we will be heard, we will not take no for an answer. We will rise above any and all statistics and do what's right and good for the world. And that's just continue to be who we are. Proud. Thank you. Always gets me a little bit right here when every DK throws it down. And if it got to you too, it's, it's about to get deep. Because now we got the OG of Maine inside out, our mentor, our most, one of the most powerful voices in abolition in all of Maine, Mr. Joseph Jackson. Come tell on the house. First of all, I want you to give it up for all these wonderful farmers tonight. We were caged birds and herds. Couldn't get over being kicked to the curb. If our words were sung, we sung, we're hurt. We sung it in church. Sung it to the judges, jurors, lawyers, and the clerk. We sung somber songs. Dear John, love Jones. Sung for family members now gone. We sung to the frightened officer, fearing he wouldn't crack our dome. We sung to the warden. We sung hard and long. We sung, pleading for him to let us go home. I know why the cage bird sings. Same reason the field slaves sang. 
We were all singing the same damn thing. We lost our freedom. They had clipped our wings. We were singing to God because there's no one else praying to fly free before death. And now that I'm free, you know they messed up when they let OG go free. Not that high school dropout, deaf, dumb, and blind, ignorant to how the world judged me. I discovered that justice wasn't blind and that beneath her blindfold, she could see. She caught me slipping. Past ain't worth mentioning. Like every other cat enslaved or lynched, condemned by white lenses. Behind chain link fenceless, you're defenseless. It's senseless to build your shield on weight benches because the boys in blue gang up like they cripping. Gone is the missus. Gone is the mistress. Because even in visits, they take your kisses. Table and plexiglass barriers keeping your distance. There was no space on the wall for family pictures of famous strippers. When you knew it was going to be a bad day because the pod officer didn't come in chipper. I used to use Ultra Bright to polish my toilet till it was clearer than the mirror. My wax floor gleaming like Walden Pond, early morn, dead of winter. My mattress creased my shirt and britches. OG creased up in the chow hall, making the pots glisten. Back in the day, there was no pay. The incentive was to make your own dishes. Working on my appeal, appealing grievances. And this oppressive system was like pushing a boulder uphill like Sisyphus. Black codes, young man. The warden said, rules are for you, not for me, understand? You're the subtraction in this community census, like three-fifths of a man. So my staff can make you strip and do a little dance. Strip you naked over and over again doing yoga under the gaze of a uniformed man. No taking knees. No begging please. Just stripped until you stripped of dignity. No copping please. For those still sitting in cells filled with trauma and grief, follow me. Put your head in the book. Stack up degrees. Break the psychological chains to discover another eye for which to see. When you're free, don't head back to the streets. Head down to town hall. Seek to erase black codes. Seek to create a system, let all our brothers and sisters go. I've taken on that role. Now it's your turn. When the gate open, get ready, get set. Now let's go. Well, told y'all you ain't ready for that. <laughs> we ain't never ready. We expect it, though. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, would you like to say a few words about the, um, I'm trying to blank. I remember. You remember? I remember. Okay. Remember. All right, y'all, it's time to get down to... We've given you some great artwork and some great feelings to do some things with. And now we're going to have Miss Scott Gosselin, one of our heads over at our sister organization, NYJ, give you some information on what you can do about it. What you as a person, as a citizen, as a voter, as a mother, as a father, as a brother, as a sister, uh, whatever identity you, you carry, what can you do to bring this to a world where we can all matter and belong? Uh, yeah. Are we give another round of applause to the performers for their awesome, powerful artwork tonight. 
Um, so yeah, on that, what next can we do? So Maine Youth Justice is a youth-led campaign fighting to end incarceration in Maine and close down our last youth prison that we have. <laughs> um, so right now there's about 30 kids overall that's there committed and we're spending about $18.6 million to incarcerate kids a year. That's insane, right? We could be doing so much better. You know, when you're incarcerated, you feel all the trauma. You've heard it through the powerful artworks that were here tonight, all that's come from that. And you know, it's not easy to come up here and be vulnerable and share it out, but we do this because there needs to be a change. There needs to be a change in the system. The system is actually doing exactly what it's meant to. So how will we dismantle that, get rid of it, and make different change, right? I think we could do that. Um, so Maine Youth Justice recently um, called on demands to the Governor Mills. So right now she has the power to let the kids out, but she's not doing a damn thing about it. So we are calling on you guys to call on her and join us to call on her, Randy Liberty, the head of the Department of Corrections. Everybody with power that has a authority to do something about it, to make change and let these kids out and make sure they don't go back. So um, next steps, join our, join our campaign, come in, see, join us on social media, look at our newsletter. We put out monthly newsletters to let you know how you can get involved. We just had a press conference where we talked about what's been going on in Long Creek. We just did webinar, we share everything all the time. And we try and go out in the public where anybody is opportunity to volunteer and help us out. So it takes the next steps. It's not just enough to sit here and listen to these stories. We need to make the next step and do something and take action. Um, so that's where I'm here to call on you. So join us, join our movement, and let's make change happen. All right, the next person we will be calling up is the head of the uh, Maine Prisoner Advocacy Coalition, Ms. Jan Collins. Come on up here, Jan. You know you can't come here without having to say something, talk about why we do this. Um, as I wear many hats, I'm the executive director of Maine Prisoner Advocacy Coalition. And um, Jan is um, like the real leader behind the scenes. She does it all. I'm the assistant director. Joseph is the director. I just want to make that clear. Um, and I am very grateful for everyone here tonight, both the performers who were excellent and all of you in the audience. We have several campaigns going on right now in, for bills that have been held over in the legislature. And one of the most important is the bill to ban solitary confinement. We know that even in the last week that there were kids at Long Creek who were being confined to their rooms for 23 hours a day. If you know anything about solitary confinement, you know that youth in particular are very vulnerable to the side effects of solitary confinement. It increases mental anguish, contributes to mental illness, contributes to anger, contributes to dysfunction when they're released. And yet, we continue to do this. This is a 21st century. We should not be torturing our youth. We should not be torturing adults either. It's time to end solitary confinement in Maine. If you have... If you have any desire to help out with that campaign, we can use you. We're going to need all hands on deck for the legislative session come January. So thank you very much for allowing me to speak. And thanks, everybody, once again, for your great performances.
now that you wit now that you witnessed it all, um, I'm gonna turn it over to our host, but definitely want to first of all let's give the opportunity for everybody on the stage to introduce themselves. We'll start at this side. Could you tell them your name, where you come from, and how long you've been with Main Inside Out? Um, my name is Mike. I come from Lewiston. Um, I've probably been with Main Inside Out since, what, 2016? Yeah, 2016. My name's Anthony. I'm from Portland, Maine, and I've been with Main Inside Out for running on nine years now, eight, nine years. Um, my name is MJ, or as they call me, the MVP. I, <laughs> yeah, I've been a part of M MIO probably for just going on six years now. And I also started the uh, MYJMJ campaign along with Sky. My name is JP. I use him, he, him, his pronouns, and I've been a part of Main and Set Out for a little over seven and a half years now. My name is Dom, I use he, him pronouns, and I've been a part of MIO for five years. My name is Stacy Perez, and I was introduced to this wonderful organization by my oldest son, Don Kell, in 2016. I'm now the Director of Advocacy and Support. Uh, my name is Don Kell, as you just said. Uh, I've been with Maine Set Out since, for seven years, and I'm from Biddeford. I'm Momo. Um, I'm from Lewiston. Huh? All right. I'm Momo from Lewiston. I've been with Mania Side Out for like five to six years, and I'm part of Mania Justice too. I'm Wayne Waterville. Um, I've been with Mania Side Out for about three, four years now. Um, I'm Bashir, I'm from Lewiston. I've been a part of Maine Inside Out for seven years. Um, I was a part of the original Lewiston group and I also started MRJ with Mike and Sky. Well, I'm Peter. I've been with Maine Inside Out for four years. I'm part of the Portland group, big supporter of uh, MYJ, and then also I recently just joined Restorative Justice Institute of Maine, which is more on the political end and dealing with district attorneys and everything as well. I'm Tyler, he am his, I'm from Lewiston. I've been with uh, Maine Inside Out since, what did we say, 2017? It was uh, September 1st, around, yeah, it's been like four years. Yeah, it's been a long time. <laughs> he forgets to mention that he was also hired on as one of our, uh, our first co-facilitators. And uh, uh, he's my co-host now. And my name is Daryl Shepard Jr. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, my pronouns are he, him, dude, bro, and I have been in Maine Inside Out since the winter of 2018, and I became a facilitator uh, in September of last year. Yep, uh, September of 2020. Yeah, we, we came as facilitators, and it has been my joy to facilitate these people, find people, and to do them what they do best is making artwork. And being a person who's went to art school and had to make art for money, um, they are so powerful to do what they do every week, just making artwork and building on the artwork they have. And it's like, they make the process work beautifully. So I'm so proud. Want to, make, want to thank Smooth Feather, most definitely. Want to thank Smooth Feather. 
Now that you've seen this, I mean, I mean, really, how do you feel? How do you feel after you have just witnessed this? Come on, somebody shout it out. Go ahead, let me hear it from somebody else. Moved, okay. Any other, any other value adjectives? Inspired, all right. Well, one of the things we want to do is give an opportunity for you to ask any questions. And um, our two um, hosts will be going up on the sides. And if you have a question, you can ask. And we will choose one of these lovely folks to respond. Feel free to, like, just yell it out if you need to. I like it when you ask a question. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? The album? I don't know. Which one do you want to add? When's the album coming out, guys? <laughs> okay. <laughs> anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody on that side have a question that they would like answered? About what you saw, about what you, um, what's your question? All right, um, let's get that one in the sky since we're- So what kind of, what kind of action? Do they need to take? What are the marching orders, guy? And saw tonight, I think that makes like the biggest difference. It's just like letting people know, spreading awareness, talking to them about Long Creek. You know, if they have any questions, refer to our websites. We have we post all of our social media, and you know, at, like we're all sitting up here. We love answering questions. You know, we'll, we always will take the time to do one-on-ones, take the time to come down and just have conversations. That's, a, that's the biggest part. And then um, when we do things in the community as well, um, there's going to be opportunities for volunteers and to just be able to spread awareness as well as about it. So I think that's just the biggest part is just spreading word of mouth and, you know, just having more, like, educating on it as well. Can we get the name of the website? Uh, well, it's madeinsideout.org for that they post a lot of stuff on there, and then we have venuejustice.org as well. So you can find people. We have another question. I would also add, you can also dig into your pockets and donate to Maine Prisoner Advocacy Coalition, Maine Youth Justice, and Maine Inside Out. Way to plug that in, Justice. And also, she was talking about solitary confinement. When, when I was incarcerated in Long Creek, I was incarcerated from, what is it, 2007 to 2010. I was in there for three years, 15 and 18. And the solitary confinement, they, it, there was no limitations. When, I, when they put me in there, it was either for 48 to 72, 72 hours. When you leave the room, they strip you from the mattresses so you're pretty much sleeping on a, a metal cup. So that's why it's, it's a big deal for me as well to, to see that getting moved on and pushed up. Yeah, okay. um, I'm a teacher at Lipson Middle School and I'm excited to have you guys come to um, what's one piece of advice that you would give teachers that can make a difference in your life and help you out? What is one thing that teachers can uh, teach to help uh, stem this uh, the problem of youth incarceration? I think the first system failure starts at education. School oh. first pipeline. Wait, I got it, I got it. Mike. Oh, I really just said that. Mike. That's a, that's a. Mike. Given the fact that the reason why I became, I went downhill, came from the reason from school education, I mean, I asked, I asked my guidance counselor, I asked my teachers, I asked my parents, I asked any adult I think I could trust at the time that I needed help in certain studies. And I got told that I was going to get help in those certain studies. And a year went by and I got nothing. So I guess my only advice is 
actually help when, they, when people are asking you for help. And sometimes not all kids like me are going to come out of the way to sit there and say they need help. Pay attention. Open up, open your eyes. I've said it multiple times in one, in one lifetime that the, thing, the reason things go unhidden is because people choose to just not look at them in the first place. out of a first person perspective and view things from a third person. And as a teacher, I understand it is hard because you have regulations and guidelines you gotta go by and you gotta look over all these students that are within your classroom. Um, and the biggest thing is the whole mandate reporting thing. Some, some of these kids come to teachers because they trust the teachers. They feel a connection with these teachers to confine them. But if, you know, just for them even voicing how they feel, the whole mandate reporting thing it, that just sets limitations for, for, for teachers to do what they actually feel like they need to do to help these students to get by. Hence the school to prison type. You know, that's why it's hard for us to even come to, or for the young adults to say anything to teachers, to speak to teachers, and why, hence why they think that teachers do not care. Um, I would like to say, step back and you're a teacher and you have your students, try to switch that around. I feel like everyone can still learn from everyone. I feel like if you can step down and let your students be the teachers, it would help a lot. Teachers and educators. All right, uh, we have another question. We have another question. Uh, what can I do as an 11 year old to help the you know, multiple causes shown? What can you do as an 11 year old to, to help with uh, the causes and stuff like that? Speak uh, the truth. Yeah. Go ahead. Can you repeat that one more time? Uh, could you repeat the last part of this? What can he do in his role as an 11 year old, from his space as an 11 year old old person? How can he make a difference to the causes of what, uh, what happens in the system and what happens? Uh, to people who are system impacted. Don't let, don't let it swallow you up. Stand up for people that are getting bullied and do really good and strive for the best because it can swallow anyone up real quick. Can I? Sorry, TV. Join the Young Habits program. You know, there are several of them out there. On top of that, I, you know, I don't know why this hasn't already been said, but everything that we're doing up here on stage Talking to legislators, you know, talking to Janet Mills, or things you guys can be doing at your own homes too. The things you could, you could be going to city hall just like us. These are things that we do as a collective, but these are things that can also be done as individuals. So you're asking what you can do about as an individual. As 11 years old, you can write letters to Janet Mills. You know, you can be right there with us, fighting that same fight. It doesn't matter if you're 11 or 30. Just Kids. be a leader, not a I think they're on that too. I think as we were, am I loud enough? Or are you loud? I'm a loud person, <laughs> naturally. Um, I think as you're talking about school, I think there's so many things like opportunities that you can get with the school as well. I think that sometimes in the mainstream curriculum, they might not think of a lot of like advocacy and things that could change. And I think it just takes one voice to you know, influence your friend group, influence the people around in the school, to change like policy things in that school as well. And I think that there's a lot of opportunities there. And you know, get involved in community things as well. I think, again, it just takes the one voice to keep going and make a difference in the community. You know, it doesn't matter your age. I mean. One thing that we do for you that right now is we, we speak up for them, but you yourself still have a voice. And one voice takes takes a lot of courage to go up and, do, and make a stand. And you yourself, even at 11 years old, can still do what others don't do. Speak up. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I like to speak on that. Um, who said they was 11? Yeah. Yo, bro, take care. Like, Honestly, just take advantage of being able to use your voice at a young age and take it from all of us that didn't have as many programs as there is now to be able to support and tell our story. Like, you want to know what I was doing at 11 years old? Sitting in the cell stealing cars. 
from 11 to 16, I was locked up 17 times. When I turned 16, I was committed until I was 18 years old, doing 15 months in the cell. I got out, and since I turned 18, I'm 22 now, I've been uh, incarcerated into the adult system 10 times. What it's like to be in solitary confinement for myself is, just imagine being locked down 23 and a half hours a day. You can't use the TV for the whole two months I was locked down in solitary confinement, and I can only use the phone on Sundays. I tell you, maybe 10 hours I was out of my cell in those two months, eight times I used the phone, in a matter of 60 days, and you be used to coming out for that 30 minutes. Mind you, make a phone call for 15 minutes, call your mom, call whoever, and you take a shower right back in your cell. Two books, a mattress, a blanket, that's all you get. You get comfortable being up here. So when you get out, it, it, it gives you a sense of like social anxiety. You're used to living in a box, you're used to being alone. And you don't really want to talk to nobody, so like, take advantage of using that voice. I would really like to add one thing real quick is you're really young and all a lot of things happen at a very young age and it, and it festers and it grows. There's a lot of cliques in school. You got the jocks, you got the nerds, you got a whole bunch of people, but there's always a couple people in all those cliques that don't talk, that don't do nothing, that sit in the back of the class. Go up, say hi, say how are you? It really does, it will baffle you how much that means and how much it can change. I think what we're all trying to say is, even at 11 years old, the most powerful thing you can be is kind to people. It's changed the world by being a kind person, and then when you have other opportunities like advocacy and things like that, take them. But for now, just be good, just be good to other people. Don't be the thing that turns it around for people. Uh, be, be a good, just be kind. All right, we're going to take two more, and then we'll call it. Dale, you got another one? Hi, um, and I want to know what you would say or do or both to someone who's who's facing incarceration and how you can support them. What's the talk? What's the talk? You don't mind me asking. Uh, it's assault. Oh, nah, just tell them he's not guilty and it'll it continue to eventually get dropped or small miss. It's COVID. They don't want to lock you up. <laughs> it's COVID. The jails ain't taking nobody. Well, that's true. It's a lawyer's Just let him know. You know he's what, it, what he's facing this time. Whether like sentence to go in or not going in. Just keep a clear mind. Don't let, don't let the uh, <coughs> of confinement in a cell break them. Keep his head strong. Days. Days seem like nights, nights seem like days. It just goes by quick, you know? Letters help. Yeah, a letter, you, photos, yeah, calls, you, fix, fix you, there for you, your friends that are close to them, write to them every day. It, 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 it's such, there. it's, yeah. there's nothing an uplifting spirit can help. Commissary is always great. They always, you know, just, it's just, it shows them that even though they're locked up, they still got people that care about them. Nothing worse than being in there and not hearing from anybody at all. Been there at 11 years old, thank you. I didn't hear from my mom, or my parents, or anybody of my friends for almost a year and a half. Nothing worse than not feeling like nobody, nobody wants you around. So you know, just be there. For me. That's all I can say. Being, yeah, showing that you care goes a long way. We have one last question right here. Uh, when you guys felt like you were at rock bottom, what can you go? the love and support of everybody else. Just people who cared about you. You know, um, like they said, just being, being there to, you know, let somebody know that they actually care about you. Being checked in on, you know, if you notice that somebody's in a bad space, just say, you know, go up, be like, yo, what's going on? Like, you need somebody to talk to, I'm here. I've gotten phone calls at three o'clock in the morning from people who were having a really bad night, you know, and I stayed up until five in the morning talking to them, making sure that they made it through. So it's like, be, be mindful and respectful of people's situations and then, you know, ask yourself what you can do for them 
knowing that you're not in the same mind space as what they're going through, but just think about it and then do your best. When you're incarcerated, you have no choice. There ain't no, oh, um, I'm, I'm down, I'm in the end, you know what I mean? How do I go on? You have to. And, you know, for the most part, they don't let you do nothing to you. They, they, they want to keep you. They want you to, you know what I mean, stay in this state of, I don't know, what, perpetual pain. Uh, and then, you know, you think about, you know, people say, ah, oh, you know, I don't know how you got through it. I don't, I don't know how I got through it. I don't know how anybody does. Except they suck it up or they try to, you know what I mean, like we've been conditioned to want to just man it up or whatever that means. It doesn't mean anything. And that, you know what I mean, we created a system that don't care. You don't care whether or not you want to make it how you feel. You must. And you just locked up behind a door and time just keeps moving. Well, our system is built on punishment and that's exactly what the point of it is. So that's why we're talking about the next actions and you know, imagining a world where it wasn't incarceration, where we could look at transformative, restorative, or not just trying to punish people because they're trying to keep you on this because like automatically you did something wrong, you're going to be punished in the worst way that they can think of and give you nothing and take everything and strip it from you. And so that's why we need, and that's why we're here talking about our stories and sharing it because that's just not how this world should be. See, me personally, the only thing you got when you're sitting in the cell is time. Eventually, time will come for you. Your sentence will be over. I can't tell you how you get through it because there's no really explanation to get through it. You just have no choice. You have no choice. And Joe's right. This is a guy that's got a you know a bachelor degree in there. That's an amazing story, but he ain't got much other options to do but sit there and read a book and hope that the time goes by faster. I can tell you how you get over it though and get out. You join people like me. And you come over to people like this girl, this girl, and this girl who started the group that we are in right now. And you get people like Joe and comes in and you get inspiration for the sky, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and you get a family that supports you the whole way, where outcomes, addictions can over be, over become a thing of the past, we move forward, and eventually one day we'll all get past this, no more locked doors. If you liked what you heard and you want to hear more, follow us on social media. MainUJustice.org, MainInsideOutland.org, and... MainPrisonerAdvocacy.org. Thank y'all. Thank you. Have a good Remember night. Do this for them. Appreciate you being here.